Hello everybody, it's Hippodippin here, and today uh, we're going to be doing the best of their types normal. And uh, before I get started, I just want to say that this is the third time trying to record this, uh, <laughs> this particular video, and uh, so it is taking very, very long to get this out of here. Uh, for some reason, there has been multiple errors when trying to encode, and that happens from time to time, so I'm very sorry about that, but uh, I planned on having this video out days ago, so I'm very, very sorry about that, nothing I can do. Uh, but we are going to be continuing with the series. Uh, another thing I have to say is that Terrakion, uh, one of the Pokemon that was very high up on the rock type uh, list, it has been dropped down to UU. And still, I feel like the information I had about Terrakion and the set I provided is still valid. Uh, so do go ahead and check out that video if you are interested. And uh, just know that Terrakion has been dropped down to UU. I do not expect it will stay in UU. If you know anything about Terrakion, it is powerful. And I do not think it's going to last in UU. But that's just me. And this video is about the normal type. So let's go ahead and move on to the basics. Normal type is, uh, you know, is characterized by having plenty of decent attacks. Uh, the normal type is has been fairly fortunate with its attacks. It has actually had some great ones. And uh, I say that in all earnesty uh, just because it it does. I mean, normal type excels with some of their moves. Uh, that's just the way it is. Um, they have access to like awesome, awesome attacking moves and then they have some really, really good supportive moves as well. Uh, they also have one weakness. Uh, so that is great. It also has an immunity, but I'll get to that in a second. But its one weakness is fighting, and unfortunately fighting types are common. And you can almost find one on every team, and uh, they are very powerful, so you are going to have to watch out for that. And unfortunately, most normal types do not have the greatest defense in the world, but you know what, it, it's just a matter of how you go ahead and use the normal type that is important. Many tend to be bulky with very high HP. Uh, some of the Pokemon on this list you will see have an awesome, awesome, awesome HP stat, and it really reflects in how they are used, uh, definitely. A high HP stat can go a long way, especially with high stats to go ahead and back that up. So a very high HP Pokemon is going to be in the good, in the good spot for uh, how great it can be, and uh, that ties in very well with a bulky Pokemon, and that just helps it out in every way possible. With proper team support, able to be effective at effective, excuse me, at offense. Now, this may seem as kind of a surprise, but normal types are not the greatest Pokemon offensively. Granted, they have awesome, decent attacking moves, but in general, they're just not the greatest. Uh, they're going to rely on team support to go ahead and get rid of the Pokemon that would otherwise give them a lot of trouble, like rock types or skill types or fighting types. Once those types are out of the way, normal types can have a chance at doing some serious damage. Uh, since a lot of them are uh, have, tend to be uh, bulky and tend, tend to have a fairly fairly decent attack stat, so that's awesome for them. And uh, But you are going to have to lean on that team support a little bit. Uh, they do have an immunity to ghosts, but that goes both ways. They cannot hurt the ghost types, and the ghost types cannot hurt them. Uh, if you watch my channel, uh, you'll know I sometimes use a Snorlax, and I love Snorlax, uh, but he just has a hard time dealing with ghosts, so I'm forced to run uh, Crunch on it as opposed to like a fighting type, and I much prefer to run fighting type, but I do not want to get all set up with my Snorlax and uh, be walled by a ghost type, so I do carry the Crunch on there, and uh, it comes in handy, it definitely does, but you are going to have to watch out for that immunity to ghosts, and uh, that can seriously bite you if it uh, if you're unprepared for it. Uh, and they cannot touch rock or steel types. And I just want to reiterate that rock and steel types are the two types that give normal types the hardest time. Uh, rock and steel, very, very defensive types, number one. And number two, normal cannot do a thing to them. Most of the moves that uh, normal types learn are normal type moves. Uh, granted, some can learn some fighting type moves, but usually they are not powerful enough to go ahead and do any considerable amount to a rock or steel type Pokemon. Anyway, 
but uh, they are usually outclassed by other Pokemon types, and that is true. If you are going to be using a offensive normal type, there are types that do it better. Uh, if you're going to be using a defensive type, chances are there's going to be a Pokemon that does that specific function better. Granted, I freaking love some normal type Pokemon, but the rest, I just can't, I can't see worthwhile as uh, being something to invest in. Especially when you sacrifice a team slot to a Pokemon that is generally able to be outclassed. Granted, if you want to be diverse, go right for it, man. It's all about diversity. But if you want to go ahead and, uh, you know, just run at the most effective rate possible, chances are normal types are not going to be what you're looking for. Um, but I do generally like uh, the normal type Pokemon. Some can be a bit bland in how they're used, but uh, other ones, you know, do require some kind of thinking and planning ahead, and they do sometimes have their uh, their uh, characteristics about them that make them pretty neat to go ahead and run. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, move on. Number 10 on the list is going to be Diggersby. And um, Diggersby, in case you haven't noticed, has been gaining some popularity. It's uh, very much like Azumarill, and it it's played very, very similar. And people tend to run it that way too, and uh, that is definitely for a reason. It gets um, it gets the same ability that Azumarill gets, which is huge power. And man, oh man, does that thing help? Um, because Diggersby would be pretty uh, pretty awful without it, to be honest. And um, you know what? It just really brings brings him through in the end, uh, just because it. If you've seen Diggersby, you maybe seen him with like a Life Orb or a Choice Band set. And let me tell you, there is a, uh, it does show how crazy Diggersby is, uh, especially with that huge power boost and uh, maybe if you, you know, set up like a belly drum, it's over. It is absolutely over. So you're going to have to watch out for that if you are going up against one. But if you are using one, you have a powerhouse at your hand. And uh, yeah, it really does show. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look. Diggers B has an awesome move pool. It gets very, very good moves, uh, especially with the ORAS move tutors. It gets namely like, uh, it gets the great uh, fighting type, not fighting type, excuse me, punching type moves like fire punch, ice punch, thunder punch. Um, it just gets a wide range of uh, good moves to work with after ORAS, so that's awesome for it. It is fairly bulky with 85 and 75 and 75 defenses. Um, 85 HP is pretty nice for an offensive Pokemon, and it does show that Diggersby is able to eat up some hits and then go ahead and pound back with a very effective, uh, a very, not effective, but a very uh, strong move. And if you didn't know, I'll mention this, the normal type cannot, uh, you get super effective damage off on a, uh, another Pokemon, just because no other Pokemon is weak to normal, so do keep that in mind. Uh, it can demolish in the lower tiers. I have been destroyed by Diggersby in the past, and it, there is no doubt in my mind I will be destroyed by Diggersby in the future. And I harbor no ill feelings towards Diggersby, just because of how well it's able to do its job. And uh, that job is simply to go in, you know, go ahead and return, or quick attack, or whatever, and it just, you know, it really, really uh, shows how powerful Diggersby is. It has a poor attack stat of 56. Now, with the huge power boost, this is going to bring you up to 112 base uh, attack, which is fairly nice. Um, but you are going to have to watch out for that. Uh, if you are not running huge power for whatever reason, uh, just run huge power. Trust me, it, it's better than its other two abilities. Uh, however, it is outclassed by others on this list. There's another Pokemon in the, on this list that just does its job, I feel like, better than Diggersby. And um, especially once you set it up, it's just, it's over. It really is. And uh, yeah, that's going to be Diggersby, basically. Uh, especially in the lower tiers, like um, RU, Diggersby is just a, an absolute beast. And uh, RS really helped it out in that regard, especially uh, with its moves and the move tutors it gets in that game are awesome. If you are playing on cartridge, I do very much suggest check out the ORAS move tutors. For his set, let's go ahead and put 252 in attack and 252 plus in speed, and a four in HP, and a negative nature in special attack. And all this is gonna allow you to do is maximize your speed. And you don't necessarily need to pack it uh, max attack. You do have, um, 
huge power, which does give you a very, very significant boost. I do think a life orb is good on this set, and um, it helps out a lot, I feel like. You're going to want to run Earthquake, or uh, Earthquake, really. That's the primary physical ground move you are going to want to run. It has the highest power, and uh, Earthquake is just generally a good move. Uh, you are going to want to run Super Power or Fire Punch. If you are running it in OU, I recommend Fire Punch. Uh, Super Power in the lower tiers and Fire Punch in OU. Um, just to hit those uh, Pokemon that are weak to fire, namely like Fairhorn or, you know, whatever. They're not really necessarily going to see it coming. And you are going to get massive, massive damage off. You may very well even KO them. So, that is great. And uh, Return is an awesome ability. Uh, not an ability, I'm very sorry. It is an awesome attack, and it has base 102 power when it is at max happiness. And Return just allows you to hit like the truck Diggersby is. And <laughs> if you can imagine Diggersby taking down a lot of bulky Pokemon, well, you can imagine it with Return. It is a very, very powerful normal type move, and it gets stabbed. So, that is great. And Quick Attack is there just to go ahead and get those um, last KOs if they manage to live on like a Focus Sash or something like that. You can go ahead and knock them out with Quick Attack. And thanks to the huge power boost and stab, you are going to be able to do fairly decent damage with Quick Attack. So do not, uh, you know, laugh it off as, you know, pathetic or whatever. Quick Attack is very viable on Diggersby. But yeah, it's going to be Diggersby, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our next Pokemon. Whoops, did not mean to do that. <laughs> Next is going to be Slaking, and um, if you do not know what Slaking is, let me just um, let you know. It is a meteorite in Pokemon form, and what I mean by that is it it is a demolisher. It really is. Uh, it has the highest base attack of um, uh, all Pokemon except for like a few legendaries and Deoxys attack. It is very, very powerful. And it's the only non-legendary Pokemon to have a base stat total above 600. So that alludes to how insane this Pokemon is. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and take a look. Like I said, insane stats. It is 150 HP, 160 attack, 100 defense, 95 special attack, which is very, very surprising. Uh, you definitely do not expect that coming from like a normal type of physical attacker. And it gets 65 special defense and a 100 base speed. So this thing is fast. Despite its lackluster appearance, it is a very, very fast Pokemon if you want to run it that way. It is a very bulky Pokemon and it is able to destroy. Have you even looked at that attack stat? It is out of this world. Um, <laughs> I'm blown away by how insane that attack stat is. And really, it deserves all the praise it can get because Sly King needs more support, I feel like. It is actually very fast with base 100 speed. Uh, for what this Pokemon is, base 100 speed is fast. Very, very fast. And it capitalizes on Giga Impact, which would normally be a move nobody would use. Um, but thanks to Sly King's unfortunate ability, Giga Impact is the primary go-to move. And with Giga Impact and that insane attack stat, it two hit KOs almost everything that does not resist it. Uh, namely like Steel types or Rock types or whatever. Uh, you are going to be able to two hit KO almost everything. Provided it doesn't, you know, resist, but whatever. Uh, and the only negative thing I can comment about Slay King, well there's two, but the most prominent is Truant. And uh, what that ability means is that you're not going to be able to attack every single turn. You're going to be able to move, you know, every other turn. This is the reason why nobody uses Slay King. Uh, Slay King is banned to the lower, lower tiers of Smogon just because of this ability. And it has no other uh, options for abilities. It's stuck with Truant. And I feel like that's a nice balancing way to go ahead and make Slay King nerfed. Uh, because if it had any other ability, uh, Slaking would be everywhere, I feel like. It would be absolutely everywhere, and there's nothing you could be able to do against it. Uh, so Slaking is a very is a powerhouse, in my opinion. Also, it only has base 65 special defense, so you are going to have to watch out for that. Special attacks will wear down this Pokemon quickly, especially when you cannot attack each turn. Uh, so you are going to have to keep that in mind when using Slaking. Um, but yeah... 
another thing is sliking is easy to work around. If you can, you know, maybe think he's choiced into something, you can usually work around slaking like nothing. It's ridiculous. I mean, you get free switches every other turn. It's pretty nice working against slaking too, so that that is a drawback. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at his set. You're going to want to max out that attack and HP. 252 plus in attack and 252 in HP. Uh, 4 in defense and a negative nature in special attack. Truant is unfortunately your only ability, so you are going to have to make the most out of it, which isn't much. And you can run leftovers or choice band. I'm kind of leaning towards leftovers, but choice band is a very, very viable option as well. You are going to be doing maximum damage with the choice band. But with leftovers, you are going to negate some of that, some of that damage that you are going to take when uh, you know you're not able to move. So that kind of works out nicely. Giga Impact again, very good move to run on Slaking. Hammer Arm, very very good move. Hits those um, rocket steel types. Very difficult. Very hard. Excuse me. Uh, Earthquake is there just for some more coverage and Gunk Shot. I'm sorry. Gunk Shot, fi excuse me, uh, Gunk Shot, Fire Punch, or Ice Punch. So, um, Gunk Shot is there for just a general, you know, poison type, very, very powerful move, and uh, it just, it destroys fairies, and paired with that base 160 max out attack set, it's going to be doing some damage to anything else. However, Gunk Shot does have a fairly poor accuracy, so you are going to have to watch out for that. Uh, but otherwise, Gunk Shot's a very good move. Fire Punch, hit those uh, Pokemon that are four times weak to it, like Fairhorn or Scizor or something like that, uh, something along those lines. So, th if you think if you if you think about what's going to be coming in against Slaking, Fire Punch may not be the best choice, but I feel like it is definitely one of the better options. And Ice Punch is there to hit those uh, Landruses and Galiscors, so. You got, you got options when using Slaking. If you actually look at his move pool, his move pool is not the best, but it is fairly decent and um, works for him. It really does. So let's go ahead and move on. And this is the Pokemon I was mentioning when I said it would pretty much be better than Diggersby. And this is only my opinion, but I definitely feel like it is valid. Considering how powerful Lanoon is after a belly drum, I don't think anything else is going to be really able to stand up against it. And um, it's very, very powerful. Let's, so let's go ahead and take a look at take a look at Linoon, Excuse me. It has access to Belly Drum and Extreme Speed, two potent moves. Let me tell you, you can go ahead and set up Belly Drum and then Extreme Speed the entire team. It works. I trust me. I have done this many, many times. I haven't done it recently, but I have done it in the past. Very, very powerful has an awesome move pool. Uh, it has access to moves that would otherwise be used on like other Pokemon. Uh, it has moves that affect Pokemon that would come in on Linu, basically. So if you could maybe predict the switch, you can go ahead and destroy with its uh, pretty good move pool. It has access to like Seed Bomb, Shadow Claw, stuff like that, so that worked out pretty nicely. It sweeps teams alike butter, and uh, I mean that in the most visual way possible. Linoon absolutely just mops the floor after a belly drum. So, anything, teams that are not prepared for it, namely teams that don't have a Pokemon that resists normal, are going to be at a severe disadvantage, so you are going to want to keep that in mind. Priority does not matter against this Pokemon. Uh, I think I meant to mean, I think I meant speed when I wrote this. Speed doesn't matter because you get that awesome extreme speed priority. I think I wrote that wrong, I'm sorry. That's supposed to say speed, um, but it, it it really doesn't. I mean, Linun has a good base speed, um, but extreme speed negates any use for it. So you can literally max out your attack and not feel bad about maxing out your speed. If used correctly, requires only one send in. And what I mean by that is, if you can maybe get a free switch, set up belly drum, force a Pokemon out, it is over for your opponent. I mean, that's probably the worst thing they could do is switch out after you set up a belly drum. But I feel like Linoon just is able to handle that much, much better. If you could go ahead and uh, get one send in and then just sweep them. Absolutely sweep them. 
Rock and Steel types need to be eliminated first, and this goes along with every other Pokemon on this list that's used offensively. Lanoon unfortunately has a very, very difficult time dealing with these Pokemon. Uh, these Pokemon are able to absolutely wall him, and even after an extreme speed, you are not going to be able to kill them. Uh, and they could potentially kill you, so you do want to keep that in mind when using Lanoon. Uh, there have been situations where I have been caught by the opponent, and I just couldn't do anything. They totally got me, and uh, my Lanoon could not break through, unfortunately. So you are going to have to watch out for that. But thankfully, it does have access to like Seed Bomb, so that does... Uh, negate some of the uh, effectiveness that rock types and ground types have against you so if you can maybe play it right you can definitely wreck havoc with Lanoon so let's go ahead and take a look at his set you're gonna want to max out that attack uh, put as much as you can into it 252 plus in attack and 252 in speed uh, you're gonna want to run four in defense and a negative nature in special attack you're gonna want to run gluttony just, you know, in case you mess up the EVs, uh, you are going to be able to um, eat your berry, your citrus berry, and uh, get back up to 3 fourths HP at least. So that's going to be pretty nice. And you are going to run extreme speed. Of course, that's the uh, crux of the set is extreme speed. And it basically negates any need for uh, speed control. I mean, really, extreme speed is such a potent move, uh, not many Pokemon are able to stand up against it. Uh, belly Drum, just there to boost you as much as possible. It really helps out, I feel like, so very, very cool. Uh, Shadow Claw, there to hit those ghost types. That is a big problem that uh, normal types face is the ghost types, especially after they got so set up. It is, it's very disappointing when a ghost type comes in and, uh, you know, just destroys. So you are going to want to watch out for that. Uh, definitely, definitely a good move, though, Shadow Claw and Seed Bomb, which, like I said earlier, allows you to hit those types that would normally resist or be able to take a few normal type attacks. Seed Bomb would ensure that they would not be able to take more than two. So, that means you're basically going to be able to two-hit KO any uh, bulky rock or ground type Pokemon or whatever uh, until they are dead. And Lanoon just absorbs, absorbs their lives, I guess. I don't know. He just destroys really, really easily. So, our next Pokemon is going to be Star Raptor. And I really like Star Raptor. Um, I feel like he's one of the better bird type Pokemon that you get in the game. In the games, excuse me. He's one of the better um, regional birds, I feel like. And um, Star Raptor is just a very, very good Pokemon in general, even competitively, where Pokemon like Hoot Hoot and um, Swellow are kind of lacking. And what what I mean by that is Staraptor is able to be, you know, in, I feel like. And he can just do whatever he wants. And the opponent's not going to be able to do too, too much against it. Uh, it does have access to awesome, awesome moves that any bird-type Pokemon would love to have. And um, it just helps him out in the end. So let's go ahead and take a look at Staraptor. Like I said, great, great moves. It has awesome attack and speed stats of 120 and 100 and 120 attack is very very good and close combat is one of the moves it has access to it counters some threats so namely any steel type pokemon is going to have to think twice before coming in and it just ensures that staraptor is going to be doing some damage before it goes down and uh reckless its ability hidden ability uh, boost Brave Bird and Double Edge. Two, you know, uh, attacks that would normally have Stab, which still do, and they are going to be getting that Reckless Boost, and that's going to be doing much, much more damage than, uh, say, if you were running Intimidate, which is its other ability. Uh, so, Brave Bird and Double Edge, two moves to very keep in mind. Uh, however, it does wear itself down. The Reckless Boost also means that it's going to be taking more damage from Recoil. And, uh, for those of you who don't know, Reckless is a ability that boosts any move that has, um, you know, recoil. Uh, namely, like Brave Bird and Double Edge, for example. Those moves will get boosted. Um, and so that's going to mean they're going to be worn down easier. Uh, they are. He is able to be outsped and killed easily. Staraptor has a tendency to destroy 
but if he is outsped, he cannot do anything about it. He just does not have the defenses that that a you know Pokemon requires to be able to take one or two hits, and uh, unfortunately, you know they're going to send out the Pokemon like say for example a Jolteon. Staraptor is going to die to a Jolteon. That's an extreme example, but I'm just saying, like, those are the things you have to keep in mind when using Staraptor. It really makes, um, choice scarfed sets seem much more, um, much more, uh, what's the word, you know, fanciful or, you know, wanting. So, you are going to want to run, um, something like choice scarf or something that would be able to control other Pokemon's speed, namely speed control. So, do keep that in mind. For his set, you're going to want to run 252 in attack and 252 plus in speed, 4 in defense and a negative nature in special attack. You are of course going to run, want to run Reckless, it's hidden ability. There was a time when I run and ran Intimidate, but I kind of learned that that's not necessarily the best idea. But you are going to want to run Reckless. Uh, you're going to want to run Choice Scarf, I feel like, or Choice Band or Expert Belt. And, um, I would advise against Expert Belt, but it is there for an option in case you do not want to be locked into a move. I also do not recommend Life Orb because all the recoil damage you are going to be taking is going to be insane and Life Orb is only going to be adding to that. Uh, so you are going to want to watch out for that. For his moves, Brave Bird, very very good move, um, of course gets the Reckless Boost, Double Edge gets the Reckless Boost, good move. And uh, Close Combat is there just to hit hard as hard as possible. And uh, it's there to basically destroy the Pokemon that would come in to counter it normally. Uh, so Star Raptor does have some options. And U-Turn is there just to get out of sticky situations, especially if you're using the Choice Scarf set. Helps a lot, so that is awesome. For our next Pokemon, it is going to be Porygon Z. Not a whole lot of people saw this one coming, but oh boy, is Porygon Z ever viable. Uh, Porygon Z is a very, very cool Pokemon. He has adaptability. And for anybody who knows the power of like Crawdont or Mega Lucario for that instance, uh, adaptability is a very, very good ability. Basically, a, a boost stab by a times 2 instead of by a times 1.5. So you're going to be doing bonus damage right off the bat without even having to do anything. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at Porygon Z. It has base special attack of 135, which is great. Um, that is really, really good. It has access to adaptability, like I just said. It's going to be boosting its normal, normal type attacks like crazy. Uh, try attack is going to be more useful than ever. Its move pool is very extensive. This Porygon Z and the Porygon line in general just has an awesome, awesome move pool. Very, very extensive. And um, really, you're going to be able to run a whole lot of variety, if you'd like to, into the Porygon Z sets. I'm saying, you don't have to go by what I'm saying. You can run it any way you want, any way that your team requires. So, this is just basically my kind of, you know, something to go by, if you didn't have any idea at all. Uh, it is able to sweep unprepared teams, teams that are not able to take special attacks. Uh, teams that are not able to outspeed and kill Porygon Z are going to be having issues. Uh, and it is very viable in higher tiers. I use this thing, uh, I used to use this thing in OU all the time, and I know a lot of people still use it in Ubers. Not too much, but some people do. And Porygon Z is a very, very good Pokemon to have in the, uh, in any tier really I feel like he's in UU and I don't see him dropping anytime soon but it's, it's just very very viable however he does only have base 90 speed so you are gonna have to watch out for that that is something to be wary of when using Porygon Z you are gonna require some kind of speed control namely like sticky web or choice scarf or thunder wave on another Pokemon something that's able to slow down the other Pokemon's other opponents team so that you can come in safely and just destroy with whatever. So, Porygon Z is a very, very good Pokemon, and uh, he deserves more recognition. So let's go ahead and take a look at his set. 252 in special attack and 252 plus in speed. Four in special defense and a negative nature in attack. Uh, adaptability, awesome, awesome ability. He also has uh, other good abilities. Uh, so he has Analytic. But since you want to make Porygon Z fast, it, there's no sense in making him have Analytic. 
and uh, I believe he also gets a download, which is a good ability, but I feel like uh, adaptability is much more reliable. Uh, because you can either get the special attack boost or you can get the useless attack boost. So it's not like, you know, you're going to definitely get a boost in one thing. Whereas if you had adaptability, you would. For his moveset, I recommend try attack You know, it has the chance to paralyze, burn, or freeze the opponent, which is awesome. And hits like an absolute truck. I mean, it's, it's really, really good. Ice Beam. Pretty standard move on Porygon, in general, Porygon ZN2. Ice Beam is there to hit those flying type Pokemon, those flying dragon type Pokemon, uh, flying ground. Very good move to have. Psychic is there to go ahead and have to hit fighting type Pokemon, uh, poison type Pokemon that are becoming more popular. Uh, Psychic is just a good move in general. And it's 90 base power, so it's very, very viable very viable I feel like so that is something to look forward to uh, dark pulse or hidden power fighting for the last move dark pulse is there just to go ahead and have a whole nother thing to go ahead and hit like ghost type Pokemon with um, whatever uh, but hidden power fighting I feel like is another very good option hits dark type Pokemon hits fighting type or it hits um steel types rock types whatever Ice types, it's awesome. Hidden Power Fighting is, I feel like, one of the better hidden powers. And Porygon Z definitely benefits from using it. Uh, so do keep that in mind. Our next Pokemon is going to be Ambipom. And I am not the greatest fan of Ambipom. And I just don't know what it is about it, but I don't like it. But he is very good, I will not deny that. Ambipom is very viable in almost all the tiers. He is in, I believe, RU right now, and I don't see him moving anytime soon, but he's very common, and uh, for a reason. Ambipom is a good Pokemon that just comes in, hits hard, and then comes right out, because it is frail as anything. And unfortunately, Ambipom is not the best at what it does, but it's very good for the tier that it's in. Ambipom has a base 100 attack, 105 speed, 15, excuse me, 115 speed, and it has access to two great abilities, Technician and Skill Link. Uh, Skill Link is there for like Tail Slap, and that is about it, <laughs> unfortunately, and it has no other moves that are able to be benefited from that, so I would recommend Technician, if you're, you know, like the layman. But Technician is a move that boosts any uh, attack under the base power 60 and below uh, so you are going to be able to pull off um, very very low power moves compared to like another Pokemon but with Technician you are going to be doing a lot of damage so do keep that in mind it does have a good move pool uh, not the greatest in the world but it has enough to the point where it can do very very good damage uh, with the Technician boost it's going to be able to uh, hit as hard as possible with those lower power moves which is basically what makes up its move pool and um, unfortunately, Ambipom does not have the greatest attack stat. It only has base 100, which is not remarkable in any way. Um, a lot of Pokemon are going to be doing able to hit as harder, and uh, Ambipom just can't keep up, I feel like. so. If you are going to be running Ambipom, you are going to have to keep in mind that Ambipom is not going to be hitting necessarily like a truck. But thanks to Technician, it is going to be doing some damage. However, it is going to require like something like a Life Orb to pull off maximum damage, and that goes hand in hand with the fairly weak attack stat. 100 attack, like I just said, is not anything to write home about, and uh, Ambipom is going to require some source of like an item or boosting moves, maybe Baton Pass to it, uh, to go ahead and max out the damage output that it can do. So let's take a look at a set, 252 in attack and 252 plus in speed. Gonna wanna max out that speed, get you as fast as possible. Uh, 4 in HP and a negative nature in special attack is gonna be fine. Uh, you're gonna wanna run Technician. Pretty decent move, I feel like. And you can either run a Life Orb or Focus Sash. And you can run Focus Sash if maybe you wanted to uh, have it be a lead, and if you do want to uh, Focus Sash, I do have, this moveset is specifically made for Focus Sash Ambipom, but Life Orb is very, very viable as well. Uh, you're going to want to run Fake Out, Covet, Brick Break, and Seed Bomb, and Fake Out is there just to go ahead and get some chip damage, break any sashes, break any multi-scale, anything like that, 
and um, yeah, it's going to be great. And once you go ahead and get your Focus Sash eventually broken, you can go ahead and use Covet and get what other item they, your opponent's been using and use it for yourself. And that's going to be awesome because number one, it takes away their item, and number two, it restores an item to you. So that is awesome. And uh, Covet is a very underappreciated move, and thankfully it falls under that uh, Technician Boost range, and uh, it's going to be pretty, pretty nice. Brick Break does not, however, and it is not going to be boosted by Technician, but it is still a fairly powerful move. And um, it's not going to be necessarily hitting as hard as like Covet, but Brick Break is there in case you're in a uh, bad situation and you maybe could predict a switch. You can go ahead and hit the opponent with a super effective Brick Break and do at least some kind of damage. So that's, that's kind of nice. Uh, Seed Bomb is there to go ahead and hit bulky, you know, water types, ground types, rock types, whatever. And it just is there for a good move in general. I feel like Seed Bomb is a good move for any normal type Pokemon to have. And I feel like it could be distributed to a few more. But yeah, that's pretty much Ambipomp. So let's go ahead and take a look at our next Pokemon. Which is Mega Pidgeot. And I've been using Mega Pidgeot more and more. And the more I use it, the more happy I am with it. However, a lot of people do not like it. And I am at completely perplexed by this. Because I love Mega Pidgeot. And he does what he does in such a way that it just blows my mind. He is the epitome of a good special attacker. <laughs> and however, not too many people are going to find that, you know, or not too many people are going to agree with me on that, but I definitely feel like Meg Mega Pidgeot is uh, something, a force to be reckoned with, so let's go ahead and take a look. It has awesome base 135 special attack and 121 speed. Uh, that is very, very good. Uh, and it has no guard hurricanes. You are going to be able to fire off hurricanes like nothing. And thanks to No Guard, you will never miss one. You're not going to have to worry about, you know, uh, aiming or, I'm sorry, not aiming. Uh, you're not going to have to worry about accuracy. It just is going to land every single time. And that's a huge benefit to Mega Pidgeot. And uh, that's awesome. It is able to wipe through teams that have weakened defensive Pokemon. And that is very, very awesome. Mega Pidgeot has this spectacular ability just to come in, destroy a few Pokemon, and then get right out. However, it is fairly bulky too. It's not the uh, weakest Mega in the world, and it is able to eat up one or two hits and then go ahead and roost off the damage. At least with my set, you can go ahead and roost off the damage. And it is difficult to switch into. No Pokemon wants to be switched in just to take a Hurricane. That is not ideal at all. Eh. <laughs> And I can tell you right now, Mega Pidgeot is something to be reckoned with. It had, it does have, however, a lackluster move pool. Uh, this Pokemon is not the greatest when it comes to move distribution. Not, it's not going to get you know any great special attacking moves outside of Hurricane and like Heat Wave. And uh, you are going to have to watch out for that because Mega Pidgeot is very predictable thanks to that very lackluster move pool. You can pretty much predict the Pokemon to at least have two moves, which is Heat Wave and Hurricane. And you can go ahead and play around that, but really outside of that, Mega Pidgeot is not getting any sort of um, awesome moves. So you are going to have to uh, think about that when utilizing him. But like I said, I use this guy all the time and I love him. He is great. So for your set, you're going to want to run 252 in special attack and 252 plus in speed. Ideally, if you can set up some sort of uh, speed control in Sticky Web or whatever, go ahead and transfer that plus to special attack. You're going to want to max out special attack, but in the case that you do not have Sticky Web or some sort of form of speed control, go ahead and max out your speed. Put the plus in speed. Uh, you're going to want to want to put the 4 in defense and in negative nature in attack. Yeah, of course you're going to use No Guard, which is an awesome ability that it just gets. It's awesome. And you're going to want to run Pidgeotide, of course, to Mega Evolve. And Hurricane, Heat Wave, Roost, and Defog are very, very viable moves. Uh, <laughs> Pidgeotite just allows Mega Pidgeot to destroy. Allows it to Mega Evolve. Hurricane, of course, is to get out that raw damage. Heat Wave is basically the only other good special attacking move it gets outside of like the hidden powers. It also gets Roost and Defog. 
Defog is there just because I basically had nothing else to put on it. I don't necessarily see Mega Pidgeot as a Defogger, but you know what? Now it is, just because it has no other moves outside of the Hidden Powers. Uh, but Roost is there just to get, uh, get as much HP back per turn as possible if you can maybe predict a move that the opponent would not do anything. Go ahead and Roost. Get your HP back. Mega Pidgeot is not the most frail Pokemon in the world by any means. He's actually fairly bulky. And he can go ahead and take one or two hits, and then you can go ahead and roost off the damage. Our next Pokemon is going to be Snorlax, and I love Snorlax so much. He's he's just great in every single way. Uh, <laughs> I love Snorlax. He's the greatest. Uh, but that's enough of my rambling. Snorlax is actually a fairly decent um, special wall, I feel like. And he has the ability to boost himself in the process, which is great. Uh, Snorlax, once he is set up, he is unstoppable, man, let me tell you. Snorlax is able to just go ahead, sit there, absorb special hits, and then retaliate back with, like, a body slam or crunch or whatever. I remember at the early, at the, at the beginning of the video, excuse me, I can't talk, I told you a story about Snorlax and how I run crunch. Well, Snorlax does not play around. He is a very, very powerful Pokemon with base 100, 110 attack, and uh, that really shows. It really, really does. So, let's go ahead and take a look at Snorlax. Has incredible base 10, 160 HP, excuse me, 110 attack and 110 special defense. So this Pokemon, mixed, mixed, mixed. I mean, this guy is awesome. He has a good balance between attack and special defense, thanks to that 10, 160 HP stat, he is able to go ahead and sit there and just take attacks all goddamn day. And that's what Snorlax does best. He walls a good chunk of Pokemon after leftovers. Um, and what leftovers is basically going to allow him to do is just keep getting HP back per turn. And that is the best thing you could ever hope for for a defensive Pokemon. He is a great setup sweeper due to curse. If, if you can get maybe like two or three, you know, curses up, you are set. I mean, chances are, if you're like me, you want to go ahead and get to max, just to go ahead and see that four times attack and uh, defense, nothing is going to be able to touch you then, uh, if provided you don't get a critical hit, but I mean, <laughs> oh, I love Snorlax. But yeah, if you can go ahead and set up a few curses, your opponent is going to have a very difficult time to kill you, and it is very, very good to go ahead and see that. It is near impossible to one-hit KO with special attacks. Due to his massive uh, base special defense and high HP stat, it's very, very likely you're going to be able to live whatever the move the opponent decides to go for. And uh, Snorlax just sits in there and he takes it. That's his job. However, he is slow with base 30 speed, and he is scared out by fighting types with weaker... Uh, excuse me. That's supposed to say he's scared out by fighting types due to his weaker base 65 defense. And uh, unfortunately Snorlax, even after a few curses, is still going to be taking hefty damage from super effective physical attacks. You are going to want to watch out for those fighting types, you are going to want to watch out for those types that resist Snorlax, like uh, rock, steel, whatever. Uh, Snorlax does, does have an issue with that, and like I said at the beginning of this video, I do prefer Crunch over uh, any sort of fighting move, just to hit those ghost types. So let's go ahead and move on. You're going to want to run 252 in HP and 252 plus in special defense, and 4 in defense. You're going to want to run a negative nature in special attack, and you're going to want to run immunity over thick fat, I feel like at least. Well, really, you can go 50-50. If you want more resistances against common, you know, moves, go ahead and run thick fat. But I prefer immunity, just so I'm not toxic and I'm not being worn down exponentially per turn, and I can go ahead and set up, and uh, really, it wastes some turn for some opponent because everybody expects thick fat, and I'm running immunity, and they can't even touch me. But really, Snorlax can just sit in, you know, your opponent can think you're thick fat and he try to toxic you, failed, and then you go ahead and set up a few curses and you're going to be able to uh, destroy, really. I mean, Snorlax is the greatest Pokemon. I love him. Uh, but yeah, you're going to want to run Leftovers. Leftovers just to get as much HP back per turn. Uh, like I said, Body Slam, good stab type move, 
and uh, it has a 30% ch chance to paralyze, so that is awesome. Uh, it really slows down some other Pokemon for your team, if need be. And Crunch is there to hit Ghosts, like I said. Curse, set yourself up, and then after you set a few Curses up, you can go ahead and rest off the damage you took, and then your opponent is going to be in a very, very tough situation. But yeah, that is Snorlax, and I have a feeling if I talk any more about him, uh, I'm going to keep on rambling, so let's go ahead and move on. Our next Pokemon is going to be Lopunny. Mega Lopunny, that is. And uh, this Pokemon, I have been swept by Mega Lopunny so many times before it got banned to OU. <sighs> Unfortunately. But Mega Lopunny deserves its reputation as a very, very potent attacker. And thanks to its normal and fighting type uh, types... It has a very, very wide range of attacks that it can go for. And uh, Mega Lopunny has been helped out by the Move Tutors and Oras a lot. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, I obviously did not finish this slide, but that's okay. I have some stuff to say about Mega Lopunny. It has great base 136 attack and 135 speed. That is the same speed as Mega Manetric. Uh, just in case you're wondering, you can go ahead and uh, speed tie with Mega Manetric. That's something to write about. That is a very, very fast Pokemon. Uh, Scrappy eliminates an immunity. You can go ahead and hit Ghost types with whatever move you want, and they're not going to be able to switch in on any sort of normal or fighting type move, and you can go ahead and hit them for neutral damage for whatever. It's very, very cool. Mega Lopunny does have access to very powerful moves, uh, namely like uh, High Jump Kick, uh, fake out, not necessarily powerful, but powerful in the sense that you get to get some chip damage off on the opponent. And it also has access to the punches, the elemental punches, which is a great, great, great access to have, especially if you're a, uh, you know, a physical attacker. Uh, the punches, I feel like, are some of the greatest moves in the game, just because they're able to hit so many Pokemon widely that it's awesome. And since, you know, Fairhorn and Scizor and, like, Glandorus are so, so common, uh, the Elemental Punches definitely do help out in the long run. But yeah, that's gonna be a, uh, that's gonna be very, very helpful, I feel like. Now, for some negatives, Mega Lopunny does not have the greatest defenses in the world. It definitely gets a boost in its, uh, physical defense. Uh, but really, it's still, it's, it's not up to par with really what, um, some of the other Megas can do, but it's still a very, very potent attacker, I feel like. Mega Lopunny is insanely powerful, uh, and base 136 36 attack, excuse me, is going to only exemplify that. So let's go ahead and move on. For his set, you're going to want to run 252 in attack and 252 plus in speed, 4 in HP and a negative nature in special attack. Mega Lopunny has access to Scrappy, which is awesome. And uh, like I said earlier, it eliminates a weakness or an immunity, so you can go ahead and hit them with, with, with whatever, and they're not going to be able to hit you back, which is awesome. You're going to want to run a uh, high jump kick or drain punch. High jump kick just to get that insane damage off. Excuse me. And drain punch, uh, you're able to uh, get HP back per turn. However, high jump kick does have the negative that if you miss or the opponent goes for like a protect or detect or whatever, you are going to be taking 50% uh, you know, recoil from that, and that is just awful. Uh, you are not going to appreciate that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so high jump kick, kind of a risky reward you know, type scenario, but it is a very, very powerful move, so I do consider it every time I uh, think about running Megalopa. Fake out, of course, just to get that chip damage off and... Uh, you know, break any sashes, sturdies, multi-scale, whatever, and then you can go ahead and hit them for what, with whatever your other moves. You know, uh, ice punch to hit those. You know, Pokemon that four times resist or four times weak to it. Excuse me, like Landorus or Dragonite or Salamence or whatever. Mega Lopunny is going to be able to hit them hard, which is awesome. And you are going to be able to go ahead and use Healing Wish just to boost your team back up to health if you were getting low. And uh, that is awesome. That's great. Good supportive move for a physically offensive Pokemon, which is very rare to see. Uh, but yeah, and uh, Return is there to go ahead and be a, another powerful move. Uh, if you don't, if you're not necessarily appealing to the idea of 
healing up your other Pokemon by sacrificing sacrificing low bunny I completely understand that so I go ahead and threw on return there base 102 power is nothing to laugh at and return does do some decent damage especially paralleling that base 136 attack and that is awesome but yeah that's gonna be mega low bunny our next Pokemon <clears throat> is going to be number one and that is Porygon 2 and this is kind of like a crazy thing but I really think Porygon 2 is the best normal type um, outside of like ubers and the way I'm kind of doing this is how they do in their respective tiers and I feel like Porygon 2 is just absolutely insane he is awesome a very very awesome Pokemon not many Pokemon can do what this guy does and uh, let's go ahead and take a look he has great great base stats after Eviolite Evo, Evo, excuse me I can't talk of 80 85 135, 105, and 137, and 60. And that is after Eviolite. That is really, really incredible. I mean, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, having that great base defense, special attack even, and special defense is just incredible. He has access to amazing supportive move pool. Like I said for Porygon Z, the Porygon line gets an awesome, awesome move pool. And... <laughs> Porygon 2 really capitalizes on this as being a defensive Pokemon. He really benefits, he really does. He has the ability to set up Trick Room, which is a huge asset to the uh, whole team, I feel like. If you're running a Trick Room team, Porygon 2 is definitely an option to consider. Since he is so crazy with his uh, defenses, it's awesome. At a base 80, uh, HP stat is nothing to laugh at either. He is a speed controller, able to uh, set off like thunder waves and whatever. Trick room, you know, uh, awesome. He is a reliable, he has reliable recovery in, re in uh, recover. And he is just able to keep himself he healthy, you know, turn after turn if need be. And uh, he is awesome, especially in that regard. He has great abilities. He has a download, which I feel like these abilities would help out Porygon 2 much more than it helps out uh, Porygon Z. So Porygon 2 is definitely going to be uh, benefiting a whole lot more from this uh, since these abilities are can be a little bit more lenient com considering that he is a defensive Pokemon. Uh, he, I believe he gets uh, Download, uh, he gets Trace, and he gets um, Analytic. And I, those are awesome, awesome, awesome abilities. I have been fooled a couple of times I mean, I had an Espeon out with Magic Bounce and a Porygon 2 switched in. I switched out. I switched into my, like, Galvantula or whatever. I tried to set up Sticky Webs. I realized my mistake. I hit Cancel, but of course, Pokemon Showdown doesn't want you to correct your mistakes. And it went ahead and did, you know, uh, Sticky Web anyway. So that's one way that Trace can work out. But I feel like Trace is a very uh, situational ability. It helps in some regards and hinders in some. So I definitely prefer... Um, something a lot more reliable, and that is analytic, because Porygon 2 is slow, base 60 speed, so chances are you are going to outspeed, or, uh, excuse me, be slower than the other Pokemon, and analytic is going to basically give you a life orb, um, without any recoil either, so that's awesome. However, he is slow, but in this case, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's a bad thing, uh, so slow is not bad in this regard. However, he is weak to knock off. He loses these awesome stats if he gets knocked off. Uh, his Eviolite really gives him an edge, and um, so you're going to have to watch out for that knockoff. But let's go ahead and take a look at his set. 252 in HP and 252 plus in defense or special defense. It really depends on what your team needs. I prefer special defense, but whatever, man. It's all up to you. I've even seen him split straight down the middle, but I definitely prefer maxing out one over the other. You're going to want to run 4 in Special Attack, uh, Negative Nature in Attack, Download or Analytic. I prefer Analytic. Download is can go either way. You can boost your attack or your Special Attack. I prefer something much more reliable, and that is Analytic. Eviolite is a, a great ability, or <laughs> great item, excuse me, for Porygon 2. Since he is not a fully evolved Pokemon, Porygon 2 is going to benefit a lot from Eviolite. So, that is great. And Tri-Attack is a good ability. Uh, good, I'm so sorry, good move, 
and uh, basically it allows you to either um, sometimes burn, sometimes paralyze, and sometimes uh, freeze the opponent, which is great. And it is stamp, recover, keep yourself healthy, uh, which is very important. Ice beam or trick room. Um, Ice beam is there just to go ahead and hit those uh, ground flying types, ground types, whatever. It's a good coverage move. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, trick room is just there to be more supported if you wanted to run a trick room team. Now, if you're running trick room, you may very well want to run uh, more speed, you know, or less. It doesn't matter really. Trick Room, you can go ahead and manipulate this set any sort of way you want. It all depends on what your team needs. So if your team needs a Trick Room, you know, Pokemon Setter, go right ahead with Porygon 2. It's awesome. And for the last slot, you can either run Thunder Wave or Toxic. Toxic if you just want to wear down the opponent even more. Or Thunder Wave just to slow them down and have them have a chance to not attack. I prefer Thunder Wave. Uh, Thunder Wave, in my opinion, is much better, and it allows you to go ahead and maybe get a few free turns, which is great, and uh, not a whole lot of people appreciate Thunder Wave uh, in the way that they probably should. Thunder Wave is an awesome, awesome move, and it's very annoying to go up against, but it does help out in the long run. But yeah, that is going to be the normal times and the best of their times, and I definitely feel like Porygon 2 is one of the best. Um, and keep in mind, guys, this is a subjective list, so this does not. This is my own opinion. Uh, you can go ahead and let me know whatever you want, whatever you think in the comment section, please do. I love it when my uh, subscribers or people who watch my videos go ahead and leave me comments saying what they thought of the video or what they think is better. So let's go ahead and uh, thank you very, very, very much for watching this very long video. Any support means a lot. Leave a like, you know, whatever. You guys are awesome. Leave a comment saying what your favorite normal type Pokemon is and why. I definitely want to hear your guys' opinions, and uh, maybe I can benefit from them too. Follow me on Twitter at, at @hipdippin, and uh, I will appreciate it greatly. So thank you very, very much for watching this video. I do appreciate it, and uh, I will hope to see you in the next one. Thanks.